Understanding File and Print Sharing. In this lesson you will explore NTFS permissions, file sharing, printer sharing, and connecting to shared resources. Here are some guiding questions to consider. What advanced share permission allows the user to grant access to a resource to other users? What permissions are effective when accessing a folder through a share? And what service allows file and printer sharing? When securing a computer and its resources, you will perform the following task. Evaluate the rights that users will need. Grant users or, ob or groups specific user rights. Secure an object such as a file or folder by assigning permissions to allow users or groups to perform specific actions on that object. In order to assign NTFS permissions, you must have an NTFS formatted volume. So here we can see in the dialog box the public folder and we're looking at its properties and the security tab. Granting full control NTFS permission on a folder to a user enables that user to take ownership of the folder. Be cautious in granting full control. Always grant the minimum rights for a user to perform their task. NTFS permissions apply both locally and remotely. This slide lists the standard NTFS permissions which you can apply to a user or group. Full control, users can see the contents of a file or folder, change files and folders, create files and folders, and run programs in a folder. Users can modify the access control and take ownership of a resource. The modify permission allows users to change exist, existing files and folders, create new files and folders, and delete files and folders. List folder contents, the users can view and list files and subfolders as well as execute files. This permission is inherited only by folders. Read and execute, users can see the contents of existing files and folders and can run programs in a folder. Write allows users to create new files and folders and make changes to existing files and folders. The read permission allows users to see the contents of a folder and open files and folders. A shared resource is made available to network users. These resources include folders, files, and printers. The term shared resource also can refer to a resource on a server that is available to network users. When you share a resource, you use share permissions. When accessing the resource across the network, both NTFS and share permissions apply. However, the most restricted of the permissions will be the effective permissions. As an example, imagine someone is a member of a sales group. As a member of that group, they have uh, read permission. The sales group is assigned the NTFS permission of modify. What becomes the effective permission? The effective permission would be read because it's the most restrictive of the two assigned permissions. Using a home group makes sharing easier. You can share pictures, music, videos, documents, and printers with other people in your home group. Other people can't change the files that you share unless you give them permission to do so. You can help protect your home group with a password, which you can change at any time. When Windows 7 is installed on a computer, a home group is created automatically. If a home group already exists on the home network, you can join it. After you create or join a home group, you select the libraries that you want to share. You can prevent specific files or folders from being shared, and you can share additional libraries later. The most common menu options for file sharing in a Windows 7 home groups are Nobody, which makes an item private so only you have access, Home Group Read, the home group has read-only permission, Home Group Read slash Write, the home group has read and write permissions. Specific People uses the file sharing wizard so you can choose who to share with. The read users can open but cannot change or delete a file. With read slash write users can open, modify, or delete a file. In Windows 7 public folder sharing is turned off by default but you can 
enable it and then you can share files by dropping the files into the public folder then anyone on your network in your work group is able to view your files in the public folder. Advanced sharing was the traditional method used to share resources in prior versions of Microsoft Windows. The full control permission allows a user to grant access to the shared resource. The change permission allows a user to delete files and folders within the share and the read permission allows a user to read files and run executables within the share. You can share a printer with multiple computers running different versions of Windows. You can click additional drivers to add more drivers so that the users will not have to find drivers themselves. To share a printer, click Start, click Devices and Printers, right-click the printer you want to share, and select Printer Properties. In the Printer's Properties dialog box, click the Sharing tab and enable Sharing. You want to enable printer sharing through a firewall in order to allow anyone on your network to be able to see that printer. So you can access it by clicking the start, go to control panel, network and internet, select network and sharing center and click change advanced sharing settings. This screenshot also contains the option to enable public folder sharing. In order to connect to shared resources on the network, you would click the network icon in Windows Explorer and select the computer that is sharing the resources you want to access. For printers, right click the device and select connect. This will install the appropriate driver and make the shared printer available on your computer. When you want to access a network resource frequently, it will be easier to map a network drive and this makes it available in Windows Explorer as a drive letter. The mapped network drive will be displayed in Windows Explorer under Network Locations. Here we can see the dialog box for Map Network Drive. Notice there's a Reconnect at Logon checkbox which will remember the drive mapping the next time the user logs on to the computer and make it available. Clearing that box will make that drive available only for the current session and then the drive mapping must be reestablished when the user logs back into the computer. The folder is located by the use of the Universal Naming Convention. This can also be accomplished by using the command line. For example, you can type net space use space drive letter like C colon space and then the UNC of the resource you're trying to access. Here are some more questions I'd like you to discuss with your group. When do NTFS permissions apply? What is a home group? What does the reconnect at logon setting accomplish when mapping a network drive?